Again, we've had a yet another technical issue. We do massively apologize for this. We will be providing an uninterrupted final edit of all the parts of this video at the end of the broadcast. So do not worry, you will be able to rewatch back without these technical hiccups. For now, we want to talk to our third place. It is Scotty. Scotty, mate. Now that we can actually see you you're on this side of the commentary box, welcome to the broadcasting booth. Uh, fantastic to have you in here. We were talking to you about your feeling through the wet racing there. It's not easy. TC0, but third place. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm just surprised to be here, to be honest. Didn't realize that many people would mess up in the lap because mine was pretty average. Um, coming onto the start of the lap at the, the last big sweeper, I was two wheels into the dirt just to start the lap. So I knew, I thought it would be a pretty bad result coming from that, but it turned out all right. Now it was a wet weather conditions which obviously I mean like you say it sort of caught out a few of those ones that you think would have done a bit better uh, in, in a one lap situation so how did that sort of feel for you comparatively was it something you were pretty comfortable with or was it a bit of you know oh, uncommon? I, I, do a, I do a lot of wet weather racing at home so I'm kind of familiar with it but not really on the, um, the street tyres that we had on there so it's quite quite a change in grip compared to the wets and intermediates that we usually use in race cars. Yeah. But, yeah, I was reasonably comfortable with it. Kept it on the black bit, but yeah, and I'm happy with it. Fantastic. And unlike the rest of the season, uh, where we've been using the same car, we've got two completely different cars, two completely, like they couldn't be more further apart, could they, George? So are you sort of, uh, have you done enough practice with all three of them? Uh, I'm just happy to have some variety, to be honest. Uh, th um, having the whole season in a group 486 gets a little bit boring after a while. So <laughs> it's good to have the, the group 3 Supers and the Super Formula cars out. But yeah, I'm happy. Brilliant. Massive congratulations on P3, but it's only the start. It's only qualifying. You've got two races ahead of you, so good luck. Go and get yourself ready for those. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Brilliant. Appreciate Cheers. It. Right. Up next, uh, it will be our P2 finisher, which I will have to pull up my results screen because we so had the that one, the issue. only, the Reese Davidson, Big Head Ted. There we go. So once uh, once uh, Reese Davidson is in the chair, he will be handed the <laughs> microphone. There it is, Reese. Congratulations, P2. We saw some sideways action there. Now, was that intentional, or was it as a result of the wet weather? It's just skill. I don't know what to tell you, mate. I flicked <laughs> it in sideways, caught it perfect, drove out of it, did a decent lap. Lovely. Now, no, to be serious, I braked a little late into T1, and trail braked a little funky because I'm not used to this brake set. So... Went a bit deep, went a bit sideways, caught it, drove a mediocre rest of the lap. I had a bit of pace because a bit of a wet weather specialist over here. I love the street cars, I love my drifting, so I know how to, the second something's on the edge of grip, I know exactly where it is and how to keep it there. So, that's... Uh, that's yeah, that's we, we, we saw two distinct hand movements on your camera. One was this very, very finessed control of the wheel. One hand wasn't really on, you were just sort of feeling where that wheel was. Yeah, that's how I drift a lot of the time. I will kind of use that as a stabilizer and then if I need to make that big movement I chuck the other hand on and flick it so that's kind of because most of the time drifting you know sliding around like that you don't even need a hand on the wheel it can just naturally flow through the corner that's just to guide it and so that I just this one just kind of hovers I don't know where that has come from that's obviously all my drifting I've got so much experience in drifting way more than racing so yeah, the, the, nice. the other hand signal, and then we'll get to Nathan's questions. The other hand <laughs> signal I saw was was this at the end. That was this for, this was average or? Very average lap. Yeah, okay. I mean, I obviously almost went off T1, and <laughs> then I just drove kind of meh the rest of the lap. I uh, just kind of drove it, uh, yeah. I, 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 but to be fair, when I was coming out on track, I knew I'd be P2, P3 because, well... No one else did a good lap. Everyone else seemed to do a terrible lap well, from mm. what I thought. I thought everyone would find a bit more pace. Like someone like uh, Sly Ben absolutely bent his lap. I saw his time. I thought he would have found quite a bit of pace. Crimson seemed to have a bit too in practice, but no one was able to really put it together. I guess the pressure got to them in that situation. Brutal assessment there from uh, <laughs> our second place, Reese Davison. Now, nah, well, I think you pretty much covered all the bases, mate. So we'll be seeing you very shortly in the, uh, the yeah, Group 3 Supra. Back because I suck at GT3 cars. Oh, my God. Well, you heard it here first. Reese Davidson is a one-hit wonder. <laughs> no, all good, mate. The less grip, the better, as I say. So it has too much grip for me.
Well, we'll see how he does very, very shortly. Of course, we're not that far away from getting back underway in the Group 3 Supra, which Reese, on his own admission, says it's not his favourite. So, uh, you know, we'll see how he goes. We'll see how he does. Maybe talk to you a bit later than Reese. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Reese Davison. Congratulations on P2. And we will see you hopefully shortly, but good luck in the next race. Okay. And now, of course, uh, P1. All right. So we get to talk once again to... Matthew McEwen. Um, but we've got some other things uh, to mention as well. You know, obviously, apologies for the technical interruptions to the stream. It's a very complicated thing to get set up and run. And of course, uh, sometimes these things do happen. I think we Matthew's on his way. He may be in here relatively soon. Oh, hi, Matt. Oh, there he is. Uh, welcome into the commentary booth and congratulations on P1. Uh, looked like a really good lap. Eight tenths the gap out front. Thanks. I've never done a lap that fast, actually. In practice, I was doing about 12.6s, and so that was just quite surprising for me. That's a fast, fast lap, and obviously there's a bit of a benchmark. Wet weather racing TC0. Yeah, it's uh, it's a thing. It's pretty difficult, you know. Uh, one little mistake, and you'll just go skidding. In the moment you're sliding, it's it's gone. Uh, there's not really much point trying to gather it up because you're going into the wall anyway. So you just got to drive within the limits, and... Yeah, you know, or you can just throw caution to the wind. Uh, it's up to you, really. But uh, I decided to play it a little bit safe. Just try to drive like a not like a maniac or anything. Had to catch it at one point in T3 because it just went kind of a little bit right. But besides that, it was nice and stable. Yeah, is there much in the is there much in the ways of aquaplaning? Because Sakuba Circuit's one of those ones where you definitely get some puddles in the uh, in the lower bits, and obviously the higher bits it drains off a bit. But uh, with those sport tires, you know there is a bit of rain uh, dispersion, I suppose. But it's not it's not a wet weather tire at the end of the day, is it? No, it's not really a wet weather tire. I don't think it's quite wet enough to aquaplane, but the water's definitely there. You know, it's definitely a wet race, not just a damp track, a damp track or anything like that. It's definitely quite wet, but it's not quite enough water just to send you absolutely flying from driving straight. Yeah. So, you know, it'll, it'll only do that if you're turning and you've got way too much throttle on or if you do something silly. No, all good. Well, we've got two completely different uh, cars and combos. Uh, Reese was just in here saying that Group 3 Supra is not his favourite. You were using the Group 3 Supra last weekend in the, uh, in the Mega Esports event, so you reckon you got a bit more of a bit more familiarity with that particular car? Oh, it's still not my favourite. I hate that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I drove it last week and I hated every second of it, so uh, yeah, it's, I wouldn't call it an, an advantage, let's say. It's a tricky one because we're going to Catalonia, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to Catalonia. Toyota Supra, going to be good, top speed, equal machinery though for everyone, so that advantage is kind of negated. Understeer in the corners, the infield, going to be a little bit tricky, any corners you're worried about? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of weird ones. Uh, the final corner and the one just before that, really easy to run wide, get a penalty, and it's just so frustrating. And the big sweeper T3, it just burns your tyres, so, you know, it's uh, it's just frustrating to drive through those ones. Too so, right. You know, try to manage the uh, manage the tyres. Absolutely right. Well, Matthew McEwen, thank you so much for joining us in the, com the, the commentary box, literally the commentary box. Uh, good luck for the upcoming races, and we may see you back in here later on today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very frank assessment there from the uh, the, the reigning champion, and um, yeah, like you say, Catalonia. It's a bit of an interesting interesting course. It's not really too liked by the Gran Turismo community, but it kind of got a second lease of life when they released the no chicane layout. They took out one corner, and all of a sudden, it's a much better place to race. Of course. Well, that's, I think that's a, 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 there's certainly opinions, let's put it that way. Uh, you might be getting a few comments in chat as a result of that <laughs> one, we shall see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously in the Formula 1, they removed the chicane, they didn't want any part of it. I think they do still use that a lot in the GT World Challenge. Nonetheless, whether you like it or hate it, there is no chicane today. We're going to talk about that very, very soon. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's talk about it right now. It's time to move on towards our sprint race, which is getting set up in the background right now. So let's talk about the car because we've talked about this a little bit. It is the Toyota Group 3 Supra. It's the Racing Concept 2018. This thing's got nearly 600 brake horsepower. It's very quick. It's very powerful. Great in a straight line, but as we heard from our reigning champion, not great on some of the turning. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's not a real GT3 car. Of course, you say it's a concept car that they created. I think it even predates the actual production Toyota Supra. Um, 
just to sort of see what it would look like as a race car. Of course, manufacturers like to do that sort of thing to generate a bit of hype, and what better model to make a bit of hype about than the, the Toyota Supra of all uh, marquees? And yeah, I mean, look at it. It's wide, it's low, it's got those massive arches to contain the huge racing slicks, plenty of aero, and as you alluded to talking to Matt, it's got straight line speed. That is definitely one of its strengths, and uh, yeah, there's certainly a... Uh, there's a there's, it's got its fans. It's one of the more popular choices for Group 3 racing. If you have open choice, uh, chances are you will see plenty of uh, group, group 3 Supras in amongst the mix. It's effectively completely replaced its predecessor. Of course, prior to its inclusion in the franchise, there was the FT1 VGT Group 3 car. Uh, that is largely a memory now because uh, nobody, nobody uses it. They, they favor the Supra. That's exactly it. So let's talk track because it is now time to go to the No Chicane Barcelona to Circuit to Catalonia. It's a lovely, lovely bit of track this. I absolutely love this place. However, I've had my own little bits of PTSD at the circuit as well. Turn one, of course, heavy braking zone, popular overtaking point because you're coming off that long pit straight to get that on the inside. But bear in mind, it is a bit of an S. So you've got turn two to take into account. You get up the inside line, suddenly it becomes the outside line. So it's also easy to defend in to that location as well so a lot of thinking and defensive driving gonna have to be done by the drivers at turn one turn three of course the high load right hander it'll wear out the left front tires quite a lot it'll do a little bit of uh, damage to those rears too but yeah you're leaning heavily on the cars you had through turn three then into this lovely infield section four five six seven eight all the way up to the back straight from turn nine which is a high speed sharp hairpin can overtake through here uh, be very careful when you do that. You might have a better chance down at the turn 10, which is the tightest corner on this track, Nathan. Yeah, turn 10 is certainly an interesting one. It's it's more than 90 degrees. In fact, it's near, it's more like 180 degrees. Obviously, it's not, but it is certainly the, uh, the real spot to Hail Mary a, a move if you're going to. Um, and then, like you say, turn 1 very very fast approach it's even faster in this layout because we've chopped out that chicane so your arrival speed is going to be very near terminal velocity for the uh, for the supra um and yeah there's just so many long continuous corners i mean turns 12 13 14 that is going to be such a tire killer and mandatory stop for this race too george Exactly right. So let's talk strategy because you're absolutely right. Tires two times. For those of you not in the know, this means that for every lap you do, your tires experience two laps worth of wear. That's how this works. Fuel consumption, though, at 1x. So that'll be consumed at the regular rate. We're expecting the racing softs to last plus or minus a bit around six laps. And then, of course, the racing hard tires. Both of these tires are required to be used on this Group 3, so there's going to be a little bit of strategy. Which tire do you start on? Where are you starting in terms of your qualifying results? What kind of strategy are you aiming to do? How long can you take those tires? How much can you look after them? So key things to look out for here is going to be the tire life and how well you are looking after those tires. And of course, there's such a difference too. It's not like uh, it's not like having a soft and a medium or a medium and a hard. We've got soft and hard. So there's such a difference in their performance and in their grip rip so someone who's on the soft tire will almost be able to make mincemeat of someone on a hard tire but the upshot is that uh, the hard tire is going to last longer isn't it so yeah it's definitely and and i'm amazed that you were brave enough to put a prediction on the tire life because every single time we've done that in yeah, the online we, season they've managed to to you know we, we've never been right we've never we, been right we've the, never even been the, close to our, accurate our strategists who design the races have never been right on this either <laughs> we even tried to do a plus minus two three four laps no we were completely wrong so this could be eight nine laps on the softs it could be could be less could be it could and again some of these guys are just absolute tire masters they know how to get performance out of their tire they also know how to get durability out of their tire like you say sometimes they'll go for four or five laps more than than we could have ever predicted um yeah and especially around a place like barcelona where you've got fast straights you've got tight corners you've got flowing corners there really is something for everything i think there's a reason that this place is used for formula one testing yeah, exactly right. So we are going to go to our race in a few moments time. I'm really looking forward to this. This is critical and the finishing order for this one will determine where you line up for that feature race as I understand it. So we shall see exactly what these drivers are capable of. It's no longer solo qualifying. Now they've got a race amongst themselves as well. And that is going to be a massive key factor here today. I'm looking forward to this very much. So of course, Matt McEwen will be lining up on that pole position 
And, of course, he'll have a big head, Ted, Reese Davidson, uh, who was very excited to be in the commentary booth, I have to admit. He, he was uh, definitely playing to our crowd here today. Yeah, he's certainly a, certainly a character, old Reese. But, uh, yeah, no, that's why we love him. And, uh, again, I think we're only seconds away from seeing these guys get to the business end of the, uh, the New Zealand Esports Racing Series brought to you by Toyota Gazoo Racing. Okay, we are about to get underway here for the sprint race and the lights are about to go out so keep a very close eye on those five red lights at the top of your screen we hear them now matt McEwen will lead us away false starts of course will be penalized so don't get off the brake too early the lights are out and we are racing in the group three supers that's a bad start for someone at the rear end of the grid but matt McEwen has gotten away very nicely at the beginning of this race they're all tucked into the slipstream trying to defend that inside line because there's an easy overtakes the easy is time to overtake at turn one and bigger ted is actually going to try around the outside line he's run very deep but he's actually got the move done reese davidson moves up into pole position p1 in this race right now ahead of our reigning champion matt McKeown. then it is scotty ray and p3 still holding on to the position and then of course lewis atkinson he's actually made up one position already because stone harbor has fallen back to p5 then it's sly ben the cat fighting in amongst clan fever and crimson it's a real battlefield here at the bottom of the field yeah absolutely it was uh, angus allen who had that shocker of a start so he's already on the back foot and uh, won't be too happy about that ted what a move i don't think McEwen was even expecting it he kind of just got sent immediately but uh yeah and he did it clean did it well i don't think the stewards are going to have any case to answer for there but i mean again look at all these guys arguing for the early uh early gains early moves early shakes and again 13 laps to go they do have to make that pit stop so it'll be interesting to see if some of these guys perhaps started on the softs and they're banking on getting that pit stop out of the way early in the piece or conversely are they going to duke it out on the hards get that uh get that duration done and then swap out finish on the softs and it is Matt McEwen back up into the lead it was a move at turn nine I believe it was a nice move to return that favor to big head Ted who has now fallen back to P2 under a lot of pressure and running onto the gravel he is familiar with that area of the track but he does not want to be dirtying up the tires in this situation so big head Ted falls back to P2 now the question is going to be can he hold off oh, oh. Scotty Ray he's gone for a bit of a slide he's run wide and that is a penalty 0.5 of a second for big head Ted not how you want to be beginning this race what a start from him it's not got his way in the remainder of the lap absolute hero to zero well that's a bit harsh not quite zero but I mean you see it there on the camera he's not happy really gutted with himself and again to be punished after he's already gotten it wrong that's a bit harsh but the, unfortunately that's the way the game is coded we're on board now with Scotty Ray who's absolutely he's he's the beneficiary out of that he will be thanking Ted after the race for gifting him P2 on a silver platter in the meanwhile it's McEwen with 1.3 seconds so he's got a bit of breathing room I don't think he's going to get uh, slipstreamed down any of these straights so he can just focus on punching out the laps and doing what needs to be done in the meantime we got Sly Ben the cat who's really standing to gain some spots if uh, he's behind Ted and Lewis Lewis is putting the pressure or trying to put the pressure on uh, Ted who he will know is already b mentally shaken after that disastrous uh, conclusion to his first lap and I mean dude look at how close these guys all are there's like a tenth in it and then another tenth in it and what do you expect from the uh, from the top in the country don't you Exactly, and bear in mind, of course, that different strategies are being executed as we speak. So there may be some on the hards, maybe some on the softs, and that is a move immediately. So look at this. This is really unlucky. Reese Davidson getting overtaken immediately by two cars. Whoa. A little bit of contact there as they headed towards the apex of turn uh, number, uh, number 10 there. So Lewis and Sly Ben the Cat, that's Ben Groves, up now into the top positions. They're actually really in this, potentially on for a P2 in this race. Lewis and P3 just gets himself ahead of Ben Groves and Ben Groves will continue now the slipstream as they head through this last corner into the no chicane area and that is somewhere in the wall that is a massive wall collision in fact who was that it looks like it might have been Lewis Atkinson in fact it is Lewis Atkinson he was right into the wall Lewis Atkinson into the wall on the pits and he has really really made a mess of that one yeah, that is a massive shame. He is absolutely gutted. You can see he's, he's laughing about it. He's so upset. He's, uh, his, his sadness has turned to joy. <laughs> but uh, no, look, at least he was on the hard tyre. So he's, he's going to chuck it in. He's going to put the soft tyres on. And uh, that's a lot of mileage to do on the racing soft tyre, which, uh, I mean, hey, look, 
he might salvage something yet from this. And again, this is to set the order for the feature race. So it's not it's not out down and out, but it certainly makes things harder from here on out, doesn't it? It certainly does, yeah. GD Crimson, he's also jumped into the pit lane. He's on the soft tyre at the beginning. So I do wonder if there's maybe a little bit of an issue there for him too. Uh, Ron Borba's Stone Harbour, it's Andre Schiappers. And he is currently in P5. A little bit of a snap there as they head through turn five. Now into this lovely infield section. Uh, sector 2 on its way through this part of the track. Angus GTR up at the P6, so he is actually in a great position at the moment in this race, and Angus, uh, Angus Allen he is uh, in that number 10. Very, very bright. You see it from a mile away in the commentary box, which is brilliant. And look at the, st the stone-cold focus on this man's face right now. He knows that there is a P5-positioned uh, Andre Skeppers just ahead of him. Yeah, he was, he was talking to me before the uh, before we went live, before the broadcast, and uh, he did mention that he wasn't the most confident in this race, but he just wanted to be within range, because if other people have issues, he would stand to gain. And of course, what's just happened now with Lewis, made an issue, and Angus has basically gained for free. Stone Harbour as well, he'll, uh, he'll probably be looking at that incident and not quite laughing, of course. You might recall, George, back at Blue Moon Bay, uh, Stoney did the exact same thing when it was time for him to pit. He slammed into the wall, and that effectively ended his race. So the fact that it's happened to someone who's not him, I'm sure he will be, uh, <laughs> you know, you can only laugh about these sorts of things. But, uh, yeah, look, four laps in. We're starting our fourth lap already, and things are just really starting to calm down. So I think, I think a lot of these guys are just trying to get the laps done because, again, we just need to last the distance to be able to make the swap over on the tyres and then from there they can breathe a bit easier. No one wants to burn up their softs too early in the race and then uh, be on the back foot for the entire time. Exactly, we were just watching the beautiful overtake by Angus Allen moves himself up into P5, 11.3 seconds off the leader of this race. Let's go through the order as it stands right now. Matthew McEwen out to a four second advantage, holds the fastest lap at 141.113. This man is really unstoppable right now in the Supra at uh, Catalonia. Then of course four seconds, four and a half seconds now back. It is Scotty Ray in P2. He's got a three second gap to Ben Groves. So the two youngsters with their fathers in tow. Maybe there's a father advantage going on between these two. Nonetheless they are up into the podium positions. P3 for Ben Groves and P4 for Reese Davidson. I get the feeling he is on the hard tyres because his pace has just not been there early on. He got that opportunism that he took in turn one on lap one got into the lead, immediately overtaken by Matt McEwen again. I suspect he's probably on that hard tyre. Then it is Angus Allen in P6, followed by Stone Harbour, and that is Andre Skeppers in P7. Then it is GD Crimson in P7, Clam Fever in P8, and Lewis is now out of the pit, and he is fighting with Clam Fever. There is a battle out on track. Yeah, there's uh, definitely, and again, these these two guys are pitted, so just because they're a bit further behind, don't, uh, don't think that it's necessarily because they've crashed they have also taken their pits and their tires so they, they will catch up once the sort of the, the pit running order sorts themselves out but I mean if they're gonna keep fighting like this it might just cost them some time if they uh, if they want to try and catch up they might want to look at uh, working together of course the drivers briefing beforehand they were told bump drafting is legal so if they want to try and team up and, and work bump drafting is totally legal they're happy to do it and uh, yeah so that might be an interesting that might play into their hands a bit later on. It may well do. We're going to go on board for a lap here. We've got 13 laps in this race. We're just coming on to the fifth lap, technically the sixth lap, but fifth lap overall in this sprint race. A down, hard braking zone into turn one. Get it turned in nicely. A little bit of drift in the rear end of that car there for this Group 3 class. Always tricky to get it braked in because of the trail braking required in this Group 3 class. Now you're into turn three. Long, fast, sweeping right-hander as we head under the bridge and into this beautiful section. I said before, I really like this. Repsol is the corner name. It is a great corner. Tricky though, because it's technically multi-apex. You don't usually realize it, but you've also got to be very patient on the exit, patient on the throttle, get it uh, listed out nice and wide, and then you're into the braking zone. It's downhill. It's on camber. Doesn't help you at all, because the exit's off camber. Suddenly you're on that uh, ripple strip. It's not easy to get the car going again, and the hardest corner in the game, uh, in my opinion, in the entire game, in my opinion. Turn seven here at Catalonia, uh, through turn eight and into turn nine. This is a fun section in this last sector. Yeah, and the cambers are very subtle too. You almost don't really notice it until you've made a mess of it. But uh, yeah, like you say, on camber, off camber, the transitions are very rapid, very quick. And I would actually agree with you that turn seven is very difficult. We used to see it in the World Series, didn't we? Some of the very best. And uh, they would still get caught out by that uh, 
by that particular corner. There's something about it. It's called TV3. I'm not quite <laughs> sure why it's called TV3, but it's called TV3. So. Yes, I think it might be, there might be a translation thing or something going on there. We've just gone through turn 10, hard braking zone as that one. Now through the no chicane area. It used to be a little loop. You can see that off to the right hand side there. Europe car, it is now called. Why it's called that, we don't know. It's turn 13, so it's a little bit cursed, yeah, as well, we all know. Yep, yep, that's entirely possible. And again, like you say, that chicane bit wasn't the most popular edition, but it's, it's, we don't have to worry about it for this race. And that's, uh, a f I know for a fact a few of those drivers did breathe a sigh of relief uh, when it was announced that we'd be racing at Catalunya. Um, yeah, truly dynamic lap. And aside from the really long main straight, there's really nowhere else to take a mental breather, is there? So that's right. It is a very, very tricky lap, especially when you get to that infill section. Here's Ben McDonald, of course, Chidi Crimson. He does have a 0.5 second penalty to his name. He's just come into the pit lane too, so he switched out for some fresh tyres, sitting in P6 right now. He is 24 seconds, as you can see, 25 seconds behind Angus Allen, but Angus Allen has yet to pit, as has most of the rest of the field. P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all yet to do their mandatory pit stop. We may see another couple come in in short order as we are now approaching the half race distance 13 laps will conclude this race and the checkered flag will be taken by whoever comes across the line first that's how racing that's, works I that's understand usually it. I think that's right that's, <laughs> that's how racing works I do think and of course the penalty line is just after your turn nine so it's that little straight on the run to uh, turn 10 so it's not you know it's not the biggest uh, penalty in the world as such if it was on the main straight that would be a bit more painful but uh, anyway he's cleared that penalty he's sorted how good are the young guns at the moment too slide in the cat and Scotty Ray both still doing phenomenally and they're uh, against some of the very best in the country this is uh, the world of esports is really in a good place isn't it so we're seeing it now penalty for Sly Ben though of course as soon as I say that so uh, commentary curse there perhaps once again for uh, for Ben Groves sorry mate but um, yeah no look look at how this field has basically split into two separate uh, categories hasn't it so he's uh, currently reigning in Scotty, just just marginally, little bits, little bits. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, that all that progress is going to get undone when he serves this uh, this half a second penalty. Yeah, half second does equate to quite the slowdown on track. We're going to have a little look on board with Ben Groves as he gets this penalty applied to him. So he's just going through turn seven, eight right now and up towards this fast uh, right hander. Very tricky corner to get right. Looks like he has nailed the apex though. Absolutely nailed it. You can see these yellow dots on the left hand side and the right hand side of the track. That's where your penalty is applied. It's a 0.5 second slowdown. So you actually lose more than that out on track. That's something to be aware of. Uh, ben Groves hasn't lost too much in this case to Scotty Ray. And we'll continue to charge in on him. That fastest lap from him, a 42.0, is uh, about a second and a bit off of the top time we've seen from Matt McCune, who's just rapidly moving faster and faster, nearly every lap setting something that's even faster now is a 140.900. So he's just continuing to accelerate out front. But the battle between these two youngsters is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch. Both of them got a long and amazing career in front of them in terms of their sim racing uh, ha hobby, I should say. Uh, who knows if they'll get into professional racing. I'm sure they have some plans themselves. Scotty Ray, uh, of course, MP2, he's doing very well. 1.2 seconds the gap, so slipstream going to become an issue here for Scotty Ray shortly. Yes, uh, slipping into that danger zone. Of course, the slipstream is about a second. In fact, I think it's a little bit more than a second. Uh, so, you know, Sly Ben, he's going to slowly start to capitalize on that if you can't uh, pull a gap soon but again we're getting towards the latter laps and that's when we're probably going to see the rest of these guys come in and, and do that mandatory stop because they do have to take a stop their tires might not necessarily uh, be worn but they still it, it is a mandatory required stop you're not allowed to take the hard tires and just try and make them last the whole race system as much as you probably could um, they yeah organizers decided that not nah, one mandatory stop you have to do it so yeah, we're, get, we're getting to the point where you might well start to see that happen. Some guys, they might decide to pit on the very last lap and only do one lap on the hard tyres, but by that point, your softs would certainly be uh, a little bit more than worn. So we'll see a few strategies play out. We're already seeing a few of them uh, putting their chips on the earlier half of the race, but now, as we're just seeing Sly Ben having a move up the inside, he's having a think about it. And this is definitely one of the complexes where he might want to, he, he might not make a move necessarily here, but if he can get this line right, it will set him up for a nice big slipstream. Oh. And he's got the inside. Can he make it stick? He sends it. And now the, the situation completely 180s because now Scotty Ray. Oh no, he's in the pits. Okay, never mind. I thought he was going to uh, try and stick with him there and, and catch a slipstream down that massive straight, but uh, he's decided to come in instead. So 
coming in at the start of lap nine, so he's got about four laps to do on that hard compound of tyres. That's an interesting call. Yep, that's going to be a very interesting call. And of course, we don't get to see how good their tyres are or how, how bad their tyres are uh, worn. But yeah, he's uh, made a very interesting call. Not perhaps one that I would have made, but I'd be very interested to see how that works out for him. Yep, and uh, unfortunately, that's, we are not Div 1 drivers, these guys are. I'm sure they're making the right decisions out there. Scott Ray has come into the pits. That's the animation there. You get a little bit of a breather, which is always really nice. You come into that pits for that brief moment. The game takes control of the car, as long as you don't crash into the wall. Unfortunately, we did see Lewis do that. He is back up to P7. We'll go back and have a little look at what Lewis Atkinson has done in terms of the way of getting a little bit of extra progress after that collision. He will be uh, on a different tyre for a little bit, whether or not he has to pit again. For another compound, it was an early pit stop by Lewis. I'm not quite sure what his strategy thinking is today. Uh, he's been practicing hard, though. Uh, GD Crimson just ahead of him in P6. Believe he has pitted. Then, of course, Scotty Ray just coming out ahead of them in P5. The rest ahead still all need to pit. McEwen still sitting there with the fastest lap, still ahead. Ben Groves unleashed after that brilliant overtake into turn uh, 13. Really nice job by the young men. Definitely one of the uh, one of the. the Overtakes of the race, so I think if we did highlights packages for the races, that would certainly be on it. Lewis, though, he's closing that gap to Crimson, so he's down to 0.2 of a second. We might see a carbon copy of what just happened earlier with the others. Um, but again, like you say, because he was forced to take that such an unscheduled pit stop, and he would have copped damage from that too. What does he do now as he's going up to the left-hand side of uh, Crimson there? He's going to make the move. But is he going to do enough? Because you know how quickly the crossback can happen. Oh, there's a bit of contact, though. And depending on how uh, how Crimson feels about that, he might want to put that to the stewards. I don't know. They, they, the drivers were given a slight window with they could uh, put stuff to the stewards as we see Ted now in the pits. So going to be very interesting to see. We are running out of laps now. So those who haven't done their stops here, they do have to start thinking about it. As we see none of this little battle pack. But again, nice long straight now. Don't actually know the exact length of the straight, but I'd certainly wager it's a bit longer than a kilometre. Um, and yeah, so we might see some slipstream action here, and, and of course slipstream translates to a dive into turn one. But it doesn't quite look like it's going to happen this time. They, th they would have thought about it if they had the uh, momentum, if they had the line, but uh, oh mate, quality racing going on here in the New Zealand esports racing.